So thank you, Sam, and thanks for having me here at UC Davis. I'm very excited to be here and to talk about uh, some of the environmental benchmarking that we're doing in Canada and doing through the Canadian Roundtable for Sustainable Beef. Uh, so to talk a little bit about the Canadian Roundtable and kind of where we fit in, we're a regional roundtable of the global roundtable for sustainable beef, similar to the US roundtable. So we have four main pillars of work, uh, the top of the pie chart there being benchmarking and goals, and that's primarily what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, we adopted the same uh, sustainable beef definition as the global roundtable, so that's a, res a socially responsible, environmentally sound, an economically viable product that prioritizes the planet, people, animals, and progress. So the mission statement of CRSB is to advance, measure, and communicate continuous improvement in sustainability of the Canadian beef value chain. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. So a major component of that is our national beef sustainability assessment and strategy. And a little bit more about how that sh um, assessment is comprised and a little bit about the methodology behind it. So we're looking at sustainability from all three perspectives. We're looking at it from an environmental, a social, and an economic perspective. Um, and we're looking at the entire Canadian beef supply chain. So we did publish our, our first assessment back in 2016, and this is representative of the year 2014. So this acts as our baseline moving forward as we um, continue to measure progress. So just back in January, we published our second assessment, which is um, based on data from 2021. So this is an update to that baseline. And the CRSB has committed to, um, to uh, reconducting this assessment every seven years. And that timeline is mainly chosen because that's when a lot of our substantial data updates happen. And then it gives time to us to fill some of the research gaps that we're talking about here today. So the entire assessment was guided by our scientific advisory committee. The committee um, consists of member representatives from all areas of the supply chain. It also um, has subject matter experts on beef cattle production. And then the entire assessment was external, um, third party, reviewed by a panel of experts as well. So I wanna drive uh, special attention to our environmental component. So we have two different assessments within this um, bucket. So we have our environmental life cycle assessment, which is really looking at those environmental indicators that go into producing beef. And then we also have our land use assessment, which hasn't been talked about as much here at this conference, but it's really important to talk about the benefits of those grazing cattle on the land in Canada as well. So going into our environmental life cycle assessment, uh, what we looked at here was our carbon footprint. So we looked at greenhouse gas emissions intensity. We also looked at the resources that um, go into producing beef, so water, land, fossil fuel consumption, and then the potential water and air pollution uh, that's produced along the way. So to measure progress, um, those 2014 metrics that we released back in 2016, we took that data and we re-ran it through the same methodology that we got our 2021 values from. So we wanted to ensure that we did this so that when we're comparing um, our reductions, it's apples to apples um, and it's a drawing a direct comparison. And then looking at this full assessment, we also did a case study of including the meat that comes from the dairy sector into the beef supply chain and how that changes our carbon footprint. And we also did a case study using GWP star as well to see how that impacts our footprint. So we took the data from this assessment and um, researchers from the University of Manitoba and scientists from Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada uh, published a paper called an assessment of the environmental uh, sustainability of beef production in Canada, and we published that in the Canadian Journal of Animal Science. So this was different than what we did in 2016, and we thought it was really important to make sure that we're getting that gold standard um, and that rigorous uh, peer review uh, behind our metrics. So um, a large push for um, doing this assessment is really to provide benchmarks for use in, for, in future assessments and to encourage the adoption of sustainable management practices that will lower our, our footprint in Canada. So to go into a couple of the results um, from that ELCA, when we're looking at the entire beef supply chain, all the way from resource extraction to a kilogram of beef sitting on your table, we see that 83% of our emissions are coming from on-farm production. And when we're zooming into that 83% um, of on-farm production, we see, no surprise, our number one is enteric methane at 61%. Our second is feed production, all the resources that go into producing that feed. 
third being manure, both pasture and confined, and then a small contribution from transport. So looking a little bit further into that carbon footprint, when we're comparing our metrics from 2014, if we're looking um, at live weight on the farm, we see that we've had a 17.5% reduction in our GHG intensity. And when we're looking all the way to the end of the supply chain at the boneless beef and consumed by the consumers, we see that we've had a 15% reduction. So in the Canadian beef industry, this is a really good improvement for us. And we set a goal back in 2020 uh, we had a suite of long-term sustainability goals, one being a goal to reduce GHG intensity by 33% by 2030. So with this data uh, being 2021, we're on track to reach that goal. And in alignment with our um, reduction in our carbon footprint, we also saw a reduction in almost every environmental indicator that we measured. So um, less water consumed, fossil fuel depletion, freshwater eutrophication, and photochemical oxidant formation. And the reason that we really saw these improvements in our ELCA is because we see increased efficiency on farm. We see production period shortening, there's less days on feed, and because of that, there's less total enteric and manure methane emissions per unit of beef. So looking on the other side of that environmental coin, it's really important to talk about we're talking about the methane that the grazing animals emit, but it's really important to talk about what they provide to the ecosystem as well. So when we're looking at the land used for beef cattle in Canada, we see that we use 40% of Canada's agricultural land. And when we're looking at that 40%, 84% of that is pasture. So when you're looking at the pie chart, you can see 8% is used for growing hay, 7% is used for growing barley, which is our, um, our main feed ingredients in Canada, and then 1% for other feed crops, such as corn and wheat. And when we're looking at that entire pie chart, we see 1.9 billion tons of soil organic carbon um, in that land, which is a pretty substantial amount. Um, it's equal to 2 billion passenger vehicle emissions for an entire year. Um, and that is 40% of all of Canada's to total soil organic carbon stock as well. And then looking at the biodiversity aspect, we see that this land contributes 74% of our critical wildlife habitat that are used for reproductive functions. So now just to talk a little bit about the CRSB and our sustainability strategy. So we implemented a couple strategic items with uh, consultation from our members, consultation from our scientific advisory committee, and these are the areas that we've identified. So these are the areas we're working to collaborate in, to encourage, and to um, encourage adoption within these areas. So we're looking to optimize cattle diets. So um, optimizing rations, additives, which we've talked a lot about here today, alternative ingredients, low emission feedstuffs, um, and byproducts while maintaining or enhancing animal productivity, which is really important for the producer. We also want to enhance manure management and we want to safeguard that carbon that I talked about on the last slide while increasing the amount that the soil is uptaking. And through this, um, we use grazing management, we need tools to measure um, soil carbon, and we need to make it profitable to keep that land in pasture and not convert it to cropland. We're also looking to improve feed and forage production, uh, developing beneficial management practices uh, to reduce the greenhouse gases while ensuring there's economic sustainability as well and develop genetic selection tools that we've heard a lot about in the last uh, panel um, that reduces GHG emissions. We also want to measure and disseminate the Canadian beef industry's GHG footprint and carbon stock and get some more granular data and keep enhancing our data as we keep doing these assessments. And in a really important point that Troy touched on and I think is understated is the knowledge transfer between the research community and the producers. To increase that uptake of practices, we really need to increase our extension efforts and make sure that what we're um, extending is adoptable on farm. Uh, so lastly, I just wanna talk about some of our research priorities and recommendations. So we're looking to develop cost-effective methods of reducing GHG emissions, um, specifically intensity in primary production. So this includes feed, increasing yields, quality, digestibility, of course, feed efficiency. Um, we're looking to um, have innovations and in products and management that increases our productivity, 
as well as animal productivity. It's really important to have healthy animals, improve our reproductive rates, decrease our mortality, decrease our disease, um, and to quantify the impact of land management on carbon sto um, storage potential. So develop and incorporate uh, regionalized values for different cover types and different climates, and quantify the potential of changes in manure management and handling, um, such as biodigesters, acidification of manure. And we're also looking, which is a bit more um, popping up in Canada, is looking into the contribution of dairy uh, beef crossbred animals, and then looking more into that meat that's coming into our beef supply chain. So with that, that's all I have, and I look forward to the panel.